This is the Dbot T9 Plus, the latest flagship robot vacuum from Ecovax. It is the successor of the T8 AIVI, which was only released just over a year ago and was one of the most lauded robot vacuums of 2020. It includes all of the same exciting features plus a few new world firsts, so I've been really excited to use it and here are my thoughts. Let's talk about some of the incredible features of the T9. It has auto emptying, which means that it takes itself back to charge and automatically empties the dustbin into the charge base unit. Ecovacs tell us that it can store about 30 cleans, which is pretty good. If it has a plus in the name, it means that the self emptying is included, but if not, you can buy it separately. It has an oscillating mop, which means that the mopping pad actually vibrates rather than just dragging the mop around the floor. This makes a huge difference as you'll see in the mopping tests later on. It uses LiDAR for the main navigation, but it also has artificial intelligence and object detection, which means that it uses three additional lasers on the front to recognize objects on the floor, which are out of sight of the main LiDAR. It's still not quite perfect. We found it avoided a couple of things it shouldn't have and didn't avoid a couple of things that it should have, but it's actually still an amazing improvement and it makes it a lot less likely you'll come home to find it stuck. The 3000 pascals of suction is doubled from the 1500 on the T8 AI VI. It's very powerful. In fact, in some houses where the carpet is either too new or too old, we've found that we had to turn it down on the carpet. That may sound odd because 3000 pascals on a stick vacuum is still not that much. However, you have to remember that on a robot, the suction motor is right down on the ground so it isn't losing suction up the tube and it actually forms a bit of a seal on the ground itself. It has an air freshener, which is a world's first. I must admit that when I first heard about this, I expected to really dislike it, but it is actually surprisingly pleasant. It smells a lot more like a gentle male perfume than one of those ghastly things that you'd put over the top of a car aircon. It also has 3D mapping. At the moment, there's still a bit of manual setup involved though. Uh, it doesn't automatically generate that 3D view. It looks really cool in theory, and I suspect that it may be automated in the future when it's updated. Until it's automated though, I do think it does feel a bit gimmicky, but I can see a lot of uses for it if it's accurate enough. It has two big side brushes and a main brush, which does a pretty good job. The app itself is fantastic. It's easy to connect. The whole process only takes a couple of minutes and they've even included a QR code on the robot so you don't have to manually find it. Once connected, the cleaning is extremely customizable. There are no-go zones, no mop zones, and you can name each area of your house. Once you've done that, you can not only schedule specific areas for cleaning, but you can set the vacuum power mode or even the water flow rate on the mop differently for each room. For example, if you want to clean the house while you're sleeping, you can leave it on turbo mode in the living areas and change it to quiet mode in the hall outside the bedrooms. So, let's take a look at how well it actually performs. First, we'll look at navigation, because it doesn't matter how great the features, or even how good the cleaning is, unless it can reliably clean the whole house and find its way back to charge every single time. Most LiDAR robots all work quite similarly. They clean in roughly 15 to 20 square meter sections, and they clean around the perimeter of each room, getting nice and close to the walls or furniture, then clean in straight lines back and forth in the middle of that perimeter until the area is completed. The T9 is no different in that regard, yet somehow it completed the room in under 18 minutes, where other really good LiDAR robots have taken 22 to 23 minutes. It's not that it actually moves faster, and the difference isn't immediately noticeable when watching it work, it just seems to be a bit more efficient everywhere. As I said earlier, the T9 also uses a system called TrueDetect 3D for object recognition and avoidance. LiDAR is incredibly accurate for positional navigation, but because it sits on top of the robot and looks parallel to the floor, it can't see things lying on the ground such as cables, socks, or dog poo. Robot users have got used to picking things like this up to avoid them getting tangled in the brush, but we've all come home to find that the cleaning wasn't completed because we missed that errant sock on the bedroom floor. That's where this obstacle avoidance becomes super handy. It has additional lasers on the front of the robot, specifically looking for objects that may get it stuck. 
I did notice that occasionally the robot would circle phantom objects that weren't there. It's not a huge deal, it just wasted a few seconds of the 175 minute runtime. But on other occasions it missed things that were there. I do think it's an incredible feature that's only going to get better with future updates, but it's not 100% perfect yet. It's still best practice to pick cables etc up before doing a clean, but it's a lot less likely to be an issue if you do forget. I'm probably being too critical here because in a normal house it will cope just fine, but I don't want people to expect it to be able to navigate through a toddler's playroom without some prep. Overall the navigation on the T9 is incredible. Not only is it methodical and efficient, it's gentle on furniture, and it seems a little silly to even mention this on a robot this smart, but it can obviously detect stairs and drops that may hurt it and will avoid them. It can also clean in the dark or underneath furniture such as beds. I was deliberately not picking up things like cables, and impressively the T9 still completed every clean. In this clip it avoided the phone, cable and charger, but eventually the side brushes pulled the laptop cable into the main brush. It's not listed as a feature, but the robot actually reversed the side brushes and main brush and got itself unstuck and was able to continue cleaning. I saw it do this on a number of occasions and it's actually super impressive to see. On its quieter setting it's about 55 decibels and on max mode it's about 62. This means that it's about 40% as loud as an average handheld vacuum cleaner. To test how it handles larger debris, we threw 20 grams of Fruit Loops, which looks like about half a kid's breakfast, on the floor of our test area. As you'll see it got pretty much everything on the first pass and got anything it missed on the second lap. You'll see that the robot cleans in perfectly straight lines, so if it does its thing while you're at work, you can often come home to carpet that looks groomed like the picture Eden Park. It's not important, but hey, I find it satisfying. We ran the same test again with seeds. We measured 40 grams of seeds and it picked up 99%. That's pretty impressive because the carpet is very deep pile, so that 3000 pascals of suction does show. To test how it cleans on hard floors, we used more Fruit Loops. With the T9, it's not really a question of pickup ability. The side brushes are large and quite powerful, so they tend to flick debris around quite a lot on hard floors. In a real life setting, that power is probably actually a positive, but on the test, that seems like the biggest factor. It still did well, getting all but two of the Fruit Loops and the majority of the coffee powder. The mopping ability actually blew my mind. The whole robot shakes when the mopping pad vibrates and it easily removed everything on the first pass. We chose the syrup for these tests because an average robot mop can't quite get it after two passes, but the T9 got it immediately and honestly it looked very comfortable. There wasn't even any sticky residue left over. The, the robot also uses ultrasonic sensors to detect whether it's on hard floors or carpets and avoids taking them up onto the carpet. Although you still do have virtual no mop zones in the app, this does just prevent any little mistakes. The auto empty station is a very cool feature and generally does a good job at emptying the dustbin and at cleaning the filter itself. If you have pets or your carpet is shedding, you may need to schedule it to clean quite regularly for it to be completely effective. Robot vacuums are always really good for pet owners, but I think the combination of the cleaning performance, auto empty station, mopping power and the air freshener really do make it excel in this regard. When something's been hyped as much as the T9, it's often easy to be a little bit let down by reality. When I hear phrases like 9 and 1, I just prepare myself for disappointment. And yet somehow on the T9, Every feature seems to just work together nicely to make it a better robot vacuum. More importantly though, EcoVax haven't forgotten those fundamentals. The navigation is incredible, it's almost unparalleled how efficient and methodical it is. 
The cleaning power is also impressive. It's got heaps of suction, it gets nice and deep into the carpet and removes anything. In fact, as I've said, we've had to turn it down in some places. The mopping pad, because it's vibrating, takes it from being just a maintenance tool to a really serious mop in its own right. I think that for 1400 New Zealand dollars, including the self-empty station, this could be a bit of a game changer in the robot vacuum space. And I would recommend it for pretty much anyone, whether you're a first time robot vacuum user or you're looking to upgrade your current one. I know that it will do an incredible job in pretty much any home.